<laughs> All right, brother. It's awesome to see you. You look great. Hello. How are you? I just pressed continue on my end. Yeah. All right. Harold Augusto. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How you doing, uh, bro? I'm good, man. I'm really, I'm really grateful and honored that you asked me to do this, man. No, I, I, man. And you know, you, sometimes when I'm doing the podcast, it's really hard to, to have friends, people that I really deep care about um, oh, okay. and, and share this with, with others. But you're a Jimmy, man. You're, you're in another level. You're, you're like a, like on, on a, on a Jimmy level world. Jimmy level. Whatever that means, you know. We're family. I get it. We're family, man. We are yeah. family. And and I love that we've uh we both love the drums, man. I both yeah. love we both do this and, and look at what this amazing instrument has making us do. <laughs> no, no, no. We we're gonna talk setup, we're gonna talk playing, but for anybody who doesn't know who's Jimmy, who is Jimmy Lopez? You can make it up. No, no, you introduce <laughs> yourself. Oh, this is me. Oh, I'm That's sorry. You. That's you. Hey, everybody. My name is Jimmy Lopez. I am, um, I'm going to say I'm a drummer, percussionist, percussionist drummer. Um, in some worlds, they, they, they consider it something called, well, the new trend is the, a hybrid drummer. But I'm a, I'm a percussionist. I'm a percussionist at heart. Um, an eth ethnic percussionist, not a classical percussionist in the sense of classical music, timpanis and glockenspiels and all that things, but more in the essence of, uh, I'm going to quote Mr. Ayerto Moria mm -hmm. from great Brazilian percussionist. I'm in a uh, rhythmist. I'm an ethnoist percussion. So it's, a, I'm into a lot of drums from different countries, different cultures, everything from the traditional drum set. Americana to tablas from India, dumbex, um, Arabic drums, frame drums. Um, I'm of Puerto Rican heritage, so of course, bomba drums, um, drums from Cuba, Africa. I'm into it all. I love it all, and and I love all types of music. So I've been doing music for, oh my God, since I was seven years old. I'm in my 40s now, so, and uh, I've I've had the wonderful. I still have the wonderful life and and um of just playing music and doing everything and many things with drums and 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 have a and you know and had a I still have a continued journey in finding my sound and myself through what I do and an evolution of what I do as a percussionist. Um, so I hope that helps people to get an idea of what I do. You know, I I love percussion. I lately I'm putting stuff together like um um you know I'm not sure if we're going to be segueing into this or not, but then you know, again, I know I'm considered like a, a, a hybrid percussionist because now I play a customized drum set that allows me to play it not with drumsticks but with my hands. Let's start. Um, let's start. Let's start there. Let's start okay. there. Let's start cool. there because because uh, <laughs> you you are one of the first um, you know guys out there who has been doing that, and in fact, it was really opening. Um, I get to meet with you, what, in the Chicago drum show a few years ago? Yes. And you were demoing um, for a company. Tell me about it. It's the company. Thank you. Um, and they're talking about the Chicago drum show. And it's a company called. <laughs> it's a my back is now remembered that day. <laughs> I drove, I don't know, almost two hours, two hours and changed to made it there. I knew you were going to be there. We were going to hang out for a minute. So I'm there in the line. Um, I'm rocking a plaid shirt, jeans, and a fanny pack. Um, because fanny packs are dope. It's great, it's tough. Five, it's five, five me, but in front of me, you know, guys with like metal shirts, and behind me, spikes, and you know, like, and here I am, you know, chilling in the line. And all of a sudden, this guy come from, from nowhere and hug me and give me a kiss in the head, like, brother Harold, what's up? And you made me skip the line, mm, spot on. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't remember that, but I'm glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember it. Again, I spent three, almost two and a half hours in the car by myself. Oh, I'm waiting. And the first human interaction of the day is you jumping out of nowhere, man. Uh, I remember we're having pizza. And, yes. And the, <laughs> yes, yes. So the company I was demoing for is a company, it's, it's Holland Drums. It's a, it's a gentleman in Iowa. And he's and he's been making for me and for himself and building a boutique 
company uh, of a of the, the name of the drums of the spe- specific line is called the Muffin Top Drum. The Muffin Top. The Muffin Top. And I'm going to try to, let's see. I don't know if oh, dude, lighting, yeah, totally. If the lighting is good enough, but um, so basically, if you guys can see, I'll play it. Hopefully you can hear it. So basically it's a drum set. Drum set shells retrofitted with Remo the Jimbe heads. Now he's not the first to create this drum set. This drum set was actually well. This well, the original design came from a company called Remo, and Remo made a set of drums called the Mondo drums, which is which were made out of Acousticon shells. And those which things is like, like the fiber the fiberglass kind of shells, right? Yeah, and those things are like cannons, man. Those things are really heavy, and. They came into style very quickly and they got out of fashion very quickly. I guess the drumming world and percussion world weren't thinking that way yet. Um, so years so years later, I was looking for something to do that with because I stopped playing drum set for four years only to study world percussion instruments. And then I did a recording session once to get back in. And um, that's when I was like, man, now I, I, I want to mix the two. Um, so he made, so it's a drum set shells with these Remo Jimbei heads. Um, and I'll let's see if, I don't think you guys can get a good, but that's the snare on the toms. Bass drum. And I'm doing it with my fingers, you know? And the whole idea behind it is so I can take the techniques and disciplines I've learned from hand drumming, finger drumming, um, like tablas, um, frame drums, uh-huh. and, and the split hand technique, whether it's the Indian split hand technique or using just the two fingers here and applying that to the kit. So that's like, you know, doing, that's all one, that's, that's just two fingers playing. Just taking those type of ideas and techniques and applying them on a kit. So I can mix sort of, I guess, my ideas to mix the percussion world and the in the drum set world, and and take those type of ideas and apply them on hi hats, um, crash cymbals, you know, sixteen notes on hi hats. The cymbals I have are custom weighed. So I can play them with my fingers and they won't, they will not hurt my hand. Right. And uh, they're made for me by a company called, uh, they're made for me by a company called Master. To really dig into them. Won't hurt my hand. And they're, and I love cymbals. And I love drummers that are real great cymbal players. And, and I think cymbals are just, to my, to me, cymbals should be just as um, dynamic as the drums themselves when drummers play. Like, 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 yeah, and expressive. Yes, thank you. Cymbals should be just as expressive. So, so that's what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for, for mentioning that. I'm really I'm grateful for that. Awesome. I think I lost you a little bit with the mic. Uh, How about now? There you go. Hey! So... I remember, I remember the first time I played with you. Uh, we were in the studio with a, with a friend of ours, Evan, and and I was playing kid. You were playing percussion, and I was like, "Damn, this cat can play!" Oh wow, you really, you really bigging me up here. I appreciate yeah, that. no, no, man, because for real, um, if like I'll be honest, you're one of the hardest musicians I'll ever know. Like, you're like hustling all the time. Um, and I remember you couldn't, you couldn't make that commitment to that project because you were so busy playing around. How is the New York gig in life before COVID and how you think it's going to bounce after COVID? Oh, that's a great question because that's something I speak about a lot, especially the, after the, the current situation and what is the possibility of, of, of the future mm-hmm. before COVID, I have been blessed to work with a lot of diff- people like yourself, uh, a mutual friend that we we're talking about, Evan U- Ubiera, um, his music project, San Simon, a great alternative Afro Dominican, Dominican band. 
Um, so I, I'm able to do music on two different fronts. Um, you know, I, I, I work with bands and I also work with DJs doing like house music, electronica dance music in nightclubs and stages um, and even doing the wedding, wedding, wedding industry, as well as playing drums and percussion for folk artists, heavy metal artists, jazz artists. So I, I do keep busy and it's wonderful to do that and to, to be able to open myself up and learn these different musical styles um, and learn all these different styles on these, on the drums. So it's so pre COVID, it was wonderful, man, because we're all, you know, masters of our destiny in a way, because we're all just playing all different types of gigs and in, in the New York city hustle and bustle. And, you know, it's up to you to make yourself busy. We're in, in, in teaching as well. If you're not playing, you're teaching, um, or at least you should, um, it helps. And once COVID hit, I remember we were in, Amsterdam and this was in January and and for, and and things were talked about during that time in in Europe so when I came back that's you know in in February and and around March is when the lockdown started happening here in New York and it was just so wild man because you see places that are packed the rumors going around are we going to start to go lockdowns and then now lockdown started to you no know, the mask mandate started to happening uh -huh. and the and the lowering of percentage capacity in clubs. So it was just like, okay, we're playing to a full house. How's everybody doing tonight? <sighs> oh, All right, no, something's going on in this world. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, play the show. <laughs> a week later, another venue, how's everybody doing tonight? But you notice it's just a smaller uh -huh. amount of people. A week later, it's another smaller amount. Next, you know, it's like 15 people with masks on and just kind of like, we don't know what's going on, man, but play some music and make us feel good. And then, you know, and then the inevitable happened, which, you know, the, the lockdowns happened. Um, and before I continue to anybody out there who's watching, if any one of you and your family has been affected by COVID-19, how would I definitely send our sincerest 100%, 100%. anybody out there? Um, definitely. Um, but yeah, and during lockdowns, it's just like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and it forced a lot of musicians to level up in different ways. You know, now we've become videographers. Now we've become our own producers. Now we've went to Amazon, Sam Ash, Guitar Center, everything on everything online and bought the interfaces and uh -huh. microphones, micing up our kids. Now we're content creators. So, and a lot of us became our own producers. We're producing our own music. And, and many of us have, like yourself, I see you all the time. And are you always putting something out there? Is it product demos, teaching. And, and, and a lot of us has gone into music. So the music recording world has really worked because everybody had homes, not everybody, but a lot of right. people now went back into the home studio thing. Um, and then as I see the lot, you know, so, you know, which, which parenthesis, sorry to cut you there for a no, second. No. You getting a sick setup for what we talked the, 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 the few days ago. I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> when, when you're ready to, to put it out to the world, I, yeah. in your own terms, but it's sick. I appreciate it. I'm going to start my own Jimmy Lopez online percussion remote drum uh -huh. service to recording. And, and I've been investing, setting aside my financial gains to, totally. to, to buy something, to buy something really, really good that you, you've actually helped me to get. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to setting up yeah. that, that whole, that whole, uh, um, remote recording home home studio setup totally um and then coming out going back to the to going back to the subject coming out of it now is it's really it's so wild it's so wild because you know a lot of you know it, it where can we go with this conversation you know it, it's you know it, it's it's the energy really if talking for real, the energy here is still kind of weird in New York City. Those who are, um, you know, still believe in wearing a mask versus those who don't, who do not. Those who believe in getting vaccinated versus those who do not. You know, I have actually seen, and, and here's the sad part, and this is, a, this is a reality of music, you know. I've seen musicians that were in bands pre-COVID you know, still communicating via text, email, or live streams during and then somehow when it comes to getting 
a vaccination. Some band members are saying no. Some said you should. And now you kind of see a split between right. musicians. And it's a sad thing to see, but it's, a, it's part of the, that reality. And, and the other part is this wonderful new renaissance of art and artists and people coming together because things are opening now. So musicians are out playing and, and a lot of cats are amazing because everybody mm -hmm. was practicing during, <laughs> for a whole year. And if you did not practice, go practice. Yes. So everybody was practicing. And that was another blessing, you know, amidst of what was going of course, on. Of course, of course. People had the means to practice like let me go back and work on my chart reading let me go back and work on my bass drum well at least i that was my big that, thing that's what i'm working on right now because <laughs> i i listen i put it okay so sorry, sorry i we moved to this apartment in the middle of, of covid and and hot mess but thank you and and now i have like a proper desk with like i'm comfy i'm comfortable and i have a practice pad under the desk so it's just a matter of like pulling the practice out and I have a, a bass drum pedal practice pad, which I never had. So now I practice like the heel and toe technique yes. and I get to spend time. Yes. And I have my drum set like right here and I can sit down and practice. Like I'm, I'm in a place now that I'm like, I have no excuses for not practices. There, there are no excuses, period. Yes. And that's where a lot, I've seen a lot of, and we were all putting out every, Almost every week, or every, every few every few days, a lot of us were just putting out a video. Here's what I'm working uh, on. Here's uh -huh. what I'm working on. And you know, for me, I went back. Uh, you know, coming from the drum set world for many years, and then stopped the drum set world and going to just a hand percussion world, or you know, percussion, percussion. You know, you know the the left foot clave, the right foot cowbell, congas, uh -huh. bongos, or whatever. You know, and then years. You know, it was it was like. 2011 is when I got back into the drum set, but not like full on. It was just the ideas started to how can I put some stuff together? And I never had the best bass jump foot. Right. Um, so that, though, so, you know, working on it during the years and then especially during lockdown was able to really sit down with some really great drummers um, online, of course, and then going through the regiment for a year and it was wonderful. It, it really helped um, checking out all different techniques from all different types of drummers from jazz and, 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 and heavy metal. And, and uh, a lot of my technique now comes from the heavy metal world. Um, I, I love heavy metal music. I, it's amazing music and uh, working on a lot of swivel techniques, uh -huh. which when you take, um, for those of you who do not know, yes, your, your foot. So this, this is the foot, uh, this, this is the foot pedal and this is your foot you're kind of going like that. You kind of... And it's... Oh, God, sorry. Did you check out the Jojo Mayer stuff? Of course. Yeah, Jojo. Jojo is amazing, man. Jojo is the guy. I'll hook you up with the with the DVD. Oh, yeah, that main... Because he has one specifically for foot technique. That's... So YouTube has been a great, also a great teacher amongst many of us going back, and it's wonderful. And 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 you know, going back to the the the, the what's going on in New York City, like you know, I remember during lockdown where places were kind of open in a way, or where things were starting to open, but they had these incredible, crazy rules, and uh -huh. you know, musicians were playing. I remember music. I mean, it was like New Orleans out here. And especially I'm, I was in Williamsburg, Brooklyn throughout the whole lockdown. It was like, it was almost like New Orleans, man. It was beautiful. You know, like summer, you know, March, April, May, June, July, August, you know, and, and oh, the musicians were out just, just jamming, going yep. to this place. If this place was still open, cause you can only sit outside, then, you know, musicians are playing, cats are coming, sitting in like they normally would, but it was most like everybody was playing outside. There were mar these marching bands, started happening here in New York City. So it's really cool to see that music res res uh, renaissance. And one thing I, I noticed them a lot was I noticed a lot more musicians were connecting with the musicians you probably were not able to connect with pre-COVID because everybody's so busy. Uh -huh. But more people was like just 
connecting, you know, and at least from, from my, from my experience, you know, just reaching out to musicians, we never got a chance to talk and then just really getting to know each other and people. And I think a lot more people were checking out everybody else's stuff at this time too. Everybody was home. Like, let me check out this guy. What's he been doing? And, and that's really cool to see that, you know, and, and it's great to see that everybody's out. Yeah. I mean, that, and that, and that's how this concept of interview in, happened i reach out i don't remember who was it i think it was brendan buckley or something like that i shoot him a message hey i'm doing this it would be cool if you it's like yeah oh shit he said yes yes okay let me let me reach to horacio what 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 i have to lose yeah hey horacio this this and, that. and he said yes <laughs> I would ask it was cool because I was having a beer while he was having a beer. <laughs> that was oh dope. man, I should have had a beer. <laughs> I have a beer. Go uh-huh. get one. Go get one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna text my tech. <laughs> Where's my phone? Um. Yeah, that's it. it. That was the coolest thing, man. People, people were. were I'm, I'm texting for a beer. Yeah. People were just connecting, man, and just that was just wonderful. It was like. You know, musicians and drummers and that I admire and say, hey, you know, I, I, I notice you do this and you do that. Can uh-huh. I ask you a couple of questions about your setup or my in my case, since I'm looking to um, set up my home recording studio, you know, talking to people, you know, connecting with people like uh, Carter, Carter McLean. Oh, man. Uh, Car- all I, these people. I, had, I had Carter in the show. And it was one of those. Ah, he's awesome. I had Carter in the he show because awesome. I met him at that day at the Chicago drum show. He did a yes. clinic. He did a clinic. And and I talked to him for a few minutes and he was like super cool. And I was like, yeah, I'm coming back to New York. It's like, yeah, yeah, stay in touch. And when I reached out for him to him to the show, he's like, sure, no problem. It's like, oh shit. Carter's doing the show. He's I'm gonna awesome, put links man. to all those jokes down in the description. Check him out. Oh, here's a fun fact. I used to work with Carter McLean. Oh man, I hope he doesn't get mad. We used to work across the street from each other. So we were on Music Row on 48th Street. Oh so man. He was in the Manny's drum department and uh-huh. I was in the Sam Ash uh-huh. drum department. Um, so years ago, I used to work for Manny's and then I left Manny's and transferred over to Sam because I, I, I left Manny's for like a year or two. And then when I came back to New York City, I went to go to Sam Ash. And that's when, that's when... <laughs> this is a non-alcoholic Ooh. Brooklyn brewery beer special nice. effects for you non-alcoholics nah. out there no nah, sponsor salud, salud. Bro. cheers let me Here, open this up let Dale. me open this up salud man thank you so much salud. man cheers 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 mm. So Carter worked in the drum department along with another amazing talent a drummer named Guy Lakata. okay and Guy, if you guys check out Guy Lakata, he's he was at that time he was Jojo Meyer's um, drum tech. Oh wow! Yeah, Guy like uh, Guy like Guy. Guy Lakata is the mastermind behind the new flex the flex pad. Uh huh. Uh huh. He's the guy who's who does the the flex pad now, and and the the me it was an amazing. So it was my me. Um. Uh, oh my God, Alex Hernandez, who was a drummer from the band Immolation. For those okay. metalheads out there, listen, he's another. He was he was the drummer for the death metal band Immolation. So so the buzz, the big buzz was around Carter McLean and Guy Licata, like in Manny's, they have these, yo, these two drum guys that work there, they're nasty. <laughs> you know, the kids would come, the gospel kids would come to check them out. And cause Carter at that time was with studying a lot of that, the uh-huh. Jojo stuff. And, I mean, and, and, his hand technique, Carter's sorry, hand um, technique. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, Guy Lakata Guy was, uh, was uh, doing a lot of the JoJo stuff cause he was drum techie for Jojo, JoJo. So he was learning all that stuff. And he, yeah, had- he got a first hand down and then guy lakata was going into like the lion king and 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 the, the broadway stuff and guys like oh wow i wish i could remember this drummer's name um and, and for context and stop right here for a second for yeah me, those of you who are not in new york 48 between seven six and seven that was music row and when i moved to new york in 09 it was still there it was still manny's and samash was like five different venues separate like you had the, the drum department the the banner orchestra department and the different and the different um you know store and they have the guitars in another place it was a hot vibe there it was awesome beautiful you see so many people walking yep. Yep. All the whoever's on tour playing Madison Square Garden or whatever the venues they will come in, 
you know, with their drum techs. Um, you know, it, the, Manny's Alone is so famous and the mm-hmm. buzz, everybody was there. So yeah, it's, it's, it was a beautiful time. And that's how I met Carter McLean. Um, and, 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 um, and it was cool that he was doing the clinic when, when you and I uh-huh. were, were meeting up in the Chicago drum show. I remember he was, he was there doing the clinic and wonderful, man. How everybody just continues to expand and uh-huh. evolve. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So let's, let's move on to what you're up to um, now. Um, if any of, if, you don't follow Jimmy Lopez. I'm going to put his Instagram down there in the description. Yeah. Go give him a follow. Um, he's always putting cool stuff. You're posting quotes. Like, okay. Like, like every day you're going with like this very deep thoughts, um, which are like refreshing to read every morning. What's that about? I appreciate that, man. I was wondering if that was like, I was getting too crazy with that or no, 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 no. Well, you know, things happen in 2020 a lot of a lot of things happen to a lot of people on many different levels you know like i said people lost jobs people lost gigs um deeper than that a lot of people lost family members um musicians many musicians i've heard musicians decided to quit playing music a lot of them were like man you know how am i gonna make money now you know um so there was a lot of things and Because of that, the survival, you know, many of us going into our man caves and woman cave and getting it in. Mm -hmm. I've also learned to chill out for a minute. I'm a workaholic. I'm always playing my, my thought. It it never shuts off. The creativity never shuts off. I'll go to bed and I'm still thinking music. I have headphones on. I listen to music. And for the first time, because there was no gigs, I was in bed. I remember a few times I was in bed at 8.30 at at 8.30 PM on a Friday night with my lady, we're in bed in our pajamas, you know, uh-huh, reading books, uh-huh. our, our dogs on the bed and we're looking at each other like, oh my God, it's a Friday night, 8.30. And we're just reading a book and don't have to worry about nothing the next, you know, really don't really have to worry about nothing the next day. We're gonna wake up and, and just do our thing. I started reading more. I started connecting with myself more. I started working on myself mentally. I started to take the time to work out whatever mental kicks, kinks that, sometimes block us as musicians self-doubt um going back and you know am i really good enough you know can i really do this and you know we all made the commitments at least for me and just self-evaluating myself and getting back into the spiritual nature of of my being and going back into meditation going back into the practice of you know clapping for other people's successes going back into not having to worry about oh my god this guy's on this tour oh my god this guy's gonna how come i'm not getting calls you know all that eliminating that putting myself back into the realm of 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 fixing myself eternally spiritually and mentally and then with that healing taking those things that i've learned these teachers that i've learned and applying them and bringing myself back to a deeper spiritual level and wanted to, and I, and, and that promoted me, to, that prompted me to want to help others who are going through those type of things. You know, people who are going through self-doubt, what am I doing? How am I doing this? How am I going to do this? I want to, I want to open up a recording studio. Ah, I don't have the money. How do I do that? Ah, it can't happen. You know, it can. So I've been talking to people and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, uh, um, I, I can't think of like a, like a life guru or anything like that, but things who have, that has helped me block, unblock the blockage that was there. I, I wanted to just share that, you know, with people and, and thank you for that. And, um, oh, I didn't go on a tangent, but put, put mental notes out there for everybody out there who are, who I don't really talk to every day and that will probably see it and be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can do it. Okay. Yeah. That's what I needed to hear today. I needed to hear that, you know, we can do it. We're all different. Be ourselves, work on yourselves, you know, stop worrying if I'm, whether I'm good enough or not good enough, you know, just worry about doing it and being the best I can. 
because you're not going to please everybody. You know what totally. I mean? You're not going to please everybody. You could be a multi-billion selling artist and someone's not going to like your music. You know what I mean? So you're not going to please everybody. So you know what? Do it anyway. Go out there and do it. You're not going to make everybody happy anyway. So make yourself happy. Put yourself in a position, you know, and and just unblock unblock whatever negative energy is in you. So I wanted to share that with people. So thank you for bringing that up. No, that, that's amazing because that, that puts you, that puts you in a place where then you're not worried to practice or not worry about developing an, an identity and your own ideas behind, behind this instrument that could be, that is a is physically challenging because this this instrument is physically challenging and on top of that it's very easy to get compared to others like yeah. you said you see a jojo it's like yeah but i'm i'm still doing right like cake <laughs> yeah yeah and, and here's like on this level and no matter how much of practice this level is maybe exponentially is gonna open up so how do i stay motivated and and thinking about the things that I want to do and, and who am I behind this instrument, which is something that I, that I did a lot of teach uh, thinking during this time, like who am I behind the instrument? Like what is my role in the music that I play? That is, the, that is it. And that's what, that, that was probably the first one I started to post, which was um, don't compare yourself to others. Why, you know, why, why would you want to, be you, be yourself, uh -huh. do uh -huh. yourself. And, and, and that, that's a hard thing for a lot of musicians too, man. Cause you know, many of us are studying our heroes and we study them to the point where it's like in our being. And now right. how do we get out of that? You know, a lot of congueros, they're either coming from the Giovanni Hidalgo thing, you know, you hear can, nothing personal, but you, you, you can hear it, you know, right, right, right. You, can, you can hear when someone's studying a lot of Tony Williams, cause you hear all that stuff. And then, you know, and then it's like, okay, you know, where am I going to find? And this is in terms of finding your own sound and how do you get out of that? And then, you know, comparing yourself to others, you know, like I'm just as good. And I, I've heard that a lot of people say, I'm just as good as this person. How come this person is getting that? And well, that's why you're comparing yourself. You're, right. you're, you know, they're focused on, they're focused on winning while the negative person is focusing on that winner. Right. You know, so stop focusing on the winner and focusing on winning and open it up and, you know, and just, congratulate that person for what they're doing and how they're doing and allow that to motivate you to lie to light a fire on your ass and do something. Yeah. There's a percussionist in New York city and I'm going to name his name because I love this guy. His name is Jeremy Smith. Amazing. And if you guys could go out there, check out Jeremy Smith. I think it's Jeremy Smith percussion. Okay. Um, Got Find that you're gonna put it on there. Okay, Jeremy Smith. He's a oof, I, I, we're friends. I love the guy. He's like my he's my he's my brother. You know, we 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 don't really hang out. We have a lot of mutual respect for each other, and 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 we dig each other what we what we do. He, when I first seen him on the scene, this cat was you know I love him because he's he's he, you know oh, I guess he's like me. He, he's a hustler. He's into it. He's he loves world percussion instrument. He studies so much. He's a graduate from Juilliard, so he has that mind to put himself to practice, to lock himself in a room and learn what he needs to learn. And but you know, he him coming on the scene has lit up a lot of fire on a lot of musicians, but especially percussion because he was getting. He was doing everything. He's doing flamenco gigs with the flamenco artists. He's doing Arabic gigs with the Arabic artists. He's doing, you know, all this stuff. Everybody respects the guy because he put himself in that position. And that's, it's like, man, you got it. You have to clap for that. Totally. And, totally. and, and be like, you know, instead of saying, why does that guy get it? Let me go in and relearn what I need to relearn and, and, or even learn from him, you know, cause he might be like, Hey, I, I need someone for this Arabic gig and you can play the thing. Yes. Yes. So, and now I'm going to recommend you cause those guys will, they would love to have someone they can sub for so they can take another thing. But in the other and at the end of the day, just be yourself and, and don't compare yourself to anybody, I guess. And, and just, and just learn your craft. And, and, the, and, the sub, and the subbing thing is a, is a, is a great, great segue. Um, and a brother, thank you for Hope your I'm not time. taking you out of any of your questions. No, 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 no. <laughs> my man, to be honest, I I'm knew, to be tamed. <laughs> I knew that this conversation was going to be killing. So I was like, I just want to talk to my friend. Oh, me too. I, I text you that. I text you that. I just want you to did. hang with my friend. You um, did. So to, to, to wrap this up, because we can be here like for, for hours. Subbing. How this long is this show? As long as we want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> We're not syndicated TV. 
uh, so subbing is one of those things that some people goes like subbing eh, no we, and 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 it's one of the most demanding things ever to be subbing for others because you have to learn that music there's not much time to learn the music um you you learn the music for this one time and you move on to the next gig and maybe you're subbing three four gigs a week so you're constantly in this learning mode yes. all the time and you got to play it depending on the gig you might have to play it just like how this dude played it or this this person played it. And if that person plays it with a certain individual style, that's not really your thing. You got to you got to learn that thing. You got to, you know, you know, and that is the truth. And, and some people don't want to. Like, ah, right. I, know I love it. subbing. Subbing's fun. It's, it's great. Just, I you remember I remember I did. You called me for a subbing gig one time. Did I? OK. For for uh, uh what was it? That was, Sans, a, was it like a Santana. Yes, Santana yes, 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 yes. Tribute, but not Santana. The Santana tribute uh, band. Santana tribute band, to be clear. But it was a whole Santana repertoire, like what, like a fifteen song set. It was. It, it was, was a lot. lot. Of <laughs> but see, there, there was at least there's a discography for that. But there's yeah. a lot of stuff. And then when you go back, when you start learning it, you're like, wow, wait, there are little intricate, intricate things you really got to chart it out and write uh-huh. it out because the, the guy who's doing the Santana role is going to look back at you like, Oh, you didn't do that little uh-huh. bass drum snare drum thing to bring us to the next section. So yes, yeah, it's, it's nothing, but that's, but that's the fun part of subbing too, because now you got to learn this other thing right. and, and get your game up with, with the, whether it's reading or learning a load of material where you can't even have charts on stage. So right. it's like, you got to figure it out or sneak the charts on the phone or a little <laughs> computers right there. So people think yep. you look cool yep. having a computer and you just make sure. And being, and being, and being efficient. And being efficient. And being efficient. Like what are the things the that I really, <laughs> like what are the, what are the things that I really need to nail? And what are the things that I can just go by either playing a simpler version or not playing the version. That Santana gig, I sneak in my tablet and, and I just charted out all the tempos. So before each song, click, click, click. Okay, here we go. Beep. And you click like that. You change it either way. You were great on that, man. I wish you no, stayed gig, on that, that man. I, th- I think I have a clip from that gig somewhere. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. You should put it like in the middle of the conversation, kind of like segue <laughs> into it. <laughs> Was it was it was it at BB King's? Yeah, yep, yep. Wow, we yep. did BB King's together, man. We did it's no BB longer in New York City. Yep. Ah, I remember. I remember. I that week was super busy for me because um, I did the Saturday. I did sound check for. I believe I was playing in the Heights at a. At a Community theater up in the Bronx. Nice, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And that Saturday we had sound check at BB Kings. So I, you know, did that split Sunday, played the show. Then I had like in the high rehearsal like Monday and Tuesday. Thursday I played a gig with with San Simon and the Mario Marquis, and then the whole weekend playing in the high. Uh, that that week was sick. What was what was lockdown like for you? Like what, what, what was your thing? How did you, what, what was your, what was your regiment? What was your, what, how did you go into it and, 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 and dealt with it and came out? It was a time of connecting with myself, connecting with my family. Um, I get to spend a lot of time with my daughter um, and just do the simple things, you know, build Lego. and. Um, teaching her how to ride a bike. Mm. Um, we we had a lot of plans for that summer, which obviously didn't happen. But it was a time for for to reconnect, and then we have the move. On top of that, um, opportunities open, and you know, I was I was fortunate to be laid off of my job i used to teach at at the school district and they lay off a bunch of teachers especially music teachers about 10 and but i wasn't you know keeping it cool keeping it cool keeping it cool and then my dream job landed and i'm teaching band 
six, seven, and eight grade, you know? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So it, it opens opportunities as long as, you know, you keep working hard and, and you keep that mindset. So I'm, I'm very fortunate, very fortunate. Oh, that's awesome. I, I didn't mean to take you out of where no, you no, were no, going. No, I appreciate, going I appreciate back. it. It's just, you know, you're, 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 you're an amazing musician and I'm thank sure you. your, your audience knows that. So it's just one of them to. But thank you. No, no, thank you. And, and, and again, just like you learning how to do lights. So I'm running a two light setup and, and, you know, trying to figure out how to do zoom because I didn't know how, I remember the, the first interview I did I with just five minutes ago before this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's cool. It's cool. I did. I did. Well, how did I do my first interview? With with uh, Brendan Buckley, I did. He's in LA right now. Still, he's though. in LA. So I call him on my iPhone. Wow. On FaceTime, so I had to do like a screen recording of a FaceTime call. So you know, I blew up my phone memory just by that. And then on my iPad, I was running like a scratch track of everything. So I was recording the audio from the iPad and screen recording the conversation. It was a hot mess of our workflow. <laughs> it was a hot, but hey, I made it happen. Effort. No, but that's the and, and 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 that's the thing, man. You gotta. What's? I'm probably gonna butcher this quote. Might be the next quote. You gotta start before you're ready. Totally. You can't, you can't be like, uh, wait till you're ready, because who knows when you're going to be ready. You got to just do it. Like I'm going to figure it out. And that's how things get there. Look at you now. You have this nice background going and uh, it's wonderful. You're making it happen. I watch your, I watch your YouTube videos. I watch your, your, your Instagram is the Instagram stuff that I see first. And it leads me to yeah. <laughs> YouTube because you put the link, you know, Hey, right. today I'm doing a new way of paradiddles or check out this new, interface product which you got me into the behringer the behringer product you know check out this new behringer thing man and only this is dude you don't have to pay full price you could this is right. how you can find it and man and you know those things are helpful man and it's like you know a lot of people wouldn't do things like that until they had like the amazing background the lights right. in the background the nice painting candles or whatever um but then sometimes you just gotta be like i'm in my room i got everything set up let's go and 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 that's an that's an important thing what you did, man. You just started before you're ready and you just figured it out. Congratulations. Yeah. No, no, thank you, thank you. And now I'm super happy that you have a bigger space in Jersey. You joined the Jersey gang. I'm originally uh, from born and raised in Jersey, moved to Brooklyn Park Slope in 2001. Um, shortly after the the events of of 9-11. Um, lived in Park Slope till about 2009. Moved to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, 2000, 2009, 2010, um, and left, le recently left in 2020, August 28th, 2020. Damn. Yeah, so Damn. I, saw, I saw it all. I saw it all go down, man. Yeah. No, I, I remember being in your old apartment in Brooklyn. It's like that big. The, the loft. <laughs> yeah, you had like the, 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 the lofting, the, the overhang. Whatever it was thing. fun, man. Well, it was a cool place. I dig it. I dig it a lot. And I had the two dogs. Uh huh. Um, it was a cool spot, man. It was yeah. really cool, and and I like Jersey, and because of the move, it helped. That's and that was the thing because I for me because I moved. I was. Can you still hear me? Totally. Um. Because when once when we moved, you know the first you know when you when you when you're in a spot, man, that's like happening. New York City is happening on so many different levels. And it's just like, wow, you know, if I, the, the, some of the mentality, the first thing that comes to people's head is if I leave, am I still going to, am I still going to get gigs? Am I still going to be in the loop? You know, because now I'm not able to just get on an Uber or even to walk right. or whatever. Now it's like, I got to drive in, take a toll or get on two trains. And, and that's what helped open me up and, and allowed me to relax and um, excuse me, ooh, see things from a to, from a different perspective as a musician. You know, New York City is like a school. It's a school. You know what I mean? There's so much. Everything's there. It's like it, who who said it? It was Alex Acuna once said it. New York City is the center of the world in a way, musically, culturally, and 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 everybody's here. You know, everything is here. Whether it's salsa, merengue, bachata, cumbia, um, hip hop, 
death metal, jazz, jazz metal, everything is here. So when you kind of like leave, you're taking, you're, you're graduating, you're moving on, you're taking that attitude with you. So one should never think that if I leave New York City, I'm not going to be relevant or I'm not going to be getting all the, all the stuff. No, you, you're coming with that. You're, wherever you go, you take that with you. And that's what allowed me to learn. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, even though I'm still close, I can still drive in, but you're still far away enough to not be able to like, yeah, I, I can be there in 15 minutes. It's not like that now, you know, but it's a wonderful area in Jersey. I love it. We have a bigger space here. Um, we have an attic. We're in, I mean, I have my, well, my drums in the attic now. And, and it, it's, it's a wonderful place to not have to worry about going from my apartment to a rehearsal studio and then coming back home to feed the dog, um, to make sure I spend enough time with my girlfriend, you know, and now I can wake up, take out the dog, eat breakfast, go upstairs, do all the stuff I need to do. Um, whether it's teaching online, learning online, right. um, working on stuff, um, working on recording, learning <laughs> stuff. And it's, it's been wonderful. Um, I wasn't sure if you're going to ask a question. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just soaking in it. But I have a last question to you. And okay. I probably is the last one. <laughs> no, it's cool. Are you going to be more select be, because you are in this different mindset? Are you going to be more selective of the gigs that you're going to do moving on? And I give an example. When I came back from Illinois, I decided to be more selective of the gigs that I that I did because I treasure more to spend time with my wife and with my daughter. Um, so now that COVID is out of the, the picture or slowly creeping out, um, I'll keep that mentality. Like I'll be super selective of like, yeah, I, I'm playing this gig because it's music that I care and it's people that I care for. And, and I'm going to have a blast and I'm not going to be like all stressing about it. How about you? I'm going to say, so far, I've been keeping with my commitments. Okay. And so far, I've been keeping my commitments because um, we recently purchased a car. Well, we, we had it for a little bit, but we, we, we recently we, we uh, you know, purchased a car. Sure. So that's what's been helping me go back into the city and, 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 and continue my commitments. But let's be honest, you know, I got to pay tolls. I got to pay sure. gas. And, you know we as artists have no problems. We have no problems. You know, music is one of those beautiful things where you can pay million, thousands of dollars in it for equipment to learn how to play the instrument to, to for lessons and, and what have what not, and still, and still, you know, say yes, of course, to big $800 gigs, big money gigs, and still be like, how much is the gig? 75 bucks, 80 bucks to do, to do this. Sure. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. Gonna be on the gig. We have the musicians are one of the right, few right. jobs that do that. But you know, to be honest with you, you know, I, I have to think now about the transportation. Think about the gas. Barking, like that. So, so yeah, it, it 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 does now raise the question. It it and it and 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 I'm recently like now like, well, there's this gig happening. Do I want to do it? Because well, first you know, is there is there part? Where am I going to park <laughs> now? And um how much is the gig versus you know what what it costs to get to the gig and and after the gig is over what am i going to have in my pocket to at least put into the to the vehicle or bring right. back into stuff so so yes i will be honest I, now i've come to that point which a lot of musicians who moved out of new york um before covid i talked to them they're like yeah i don't you know i'm not going back there for this and this and that i get it now because there is a factor of of you know, are you going to really be able to continue to pay for the car insurance and stuff like that? Uh -huh. So there is, there is an economic to it. So All yes, right. to answer your question. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I have been, I, I haven't yet, but in, uh, now it's starting to, Ooh, I want to do this thing, but man, it's going to be, right. it's gonna be a little hard to do it. Yep. But you know, at least I at least try to figure out if I can't do it this time around, maybe we can work something out for the for the next gig or something like that. So yeah, man. How about yourself? Yeah, um, I think I'll I'll keep it, you know, I'll play the gigs that I care and I play the gigs with people that I care. Like yes. I did a gig with with Monica 
uh, not long ago, a few weeks ago with uh, our friend Adam, you know, playing the congas. I love that. Um, uh, last summer I did a, yeah, Adam, love the guy. Adam uh, Hines. Adam Hines. Yep. Yep. Not only a great percussionist, but an amazing educator. Uh, it is his birthday, I think. Oh, yeah. Was it today or yesterday? Yeah, he's kayaking. Happy birthday, bro. To Adam. Let's, <laughs> to yeah, Adam. Let us send him this clip. <laughs> yes. Cheers, bro. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, you you were still. I didn't mean to catch. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's it. I play the gigs insane. with the people that I care and the music that I care. That's and it. it's okay to and it's okay to do that. It's okay to say no. It's okay to be like, listen, I cannot do it. You know, it, it's not because you're being selfish. It's because there are other things that you have to make sure are still being maintained. And it's, and it's just another lesson in the growth and the evolution of a working musician. You know. And it's okay to say no to certain things to allow other things to open up, to allow you to continue. And that might mean like now I'm in Jersey. So now I'm reconnecting with music. The Jersey music scene. New, 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 yeah. New Jersey yeah. scene. So it's like, oh, okay. I don't have to go all the way over there. I can quickly go over here, which will take me five or 10 minutes in the car to get there. And I have to worry about tolls or parking it's a, it's a different the different geographic area so it's so when one what i won't say when one door closes but when you walk through one door and you walk through another door there's another room with different furniture right. and right. different people and it's really cool man you know and 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 being here i'm i'm here with you you know talking talking about what we do in life and this is wonderful man it's, i love it <laughs> you know? brother jimmy we can go in this for hours i want to thank you for your time and being here We'll definitely we'll do this again maybe in person next time and we'll we'll figure it out i would um, dig that and and thank you for having me man and thank you for everyone out there that's that's listening and watching and and it's been awesome and i love um just i'm gonna put jimmy's to strive totally. and do your thing and succeed i'm gonna put all jimmy oh <clears throat> sorry <laughs> my teenager now <laughs> if i saw bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to put all Jimmy's socials down below. Bye. <laughs> yeah, oh, one last thing real quick. Hit it, hit it. I'm so sorry. Um, it's just something I would like to say to, to, to musicians who watch, you know, whether are watching two, obviously two friends, you know, speak, but uh, musically, just real quick, you know, whatever it is that you're into, whatever it is that you're doing, get into other music and try other things. If you're a drum set player, Get into percussion. If you're a percussionist, get into the drum set. If you just listen to jazz, listen to something else. You know, there's a, so much out there. And there's so much you can learn from so many people. And then you'll be surprised how you bring that back into your music. Because the people who you listen to, the people who you look up to, trust me, they got Metallica CDs. They got all this other stuff. And they allow that stuff to sit in. So I just want to say, everybody, man, just allow yourself to be open to different music and the more open you get with that that'll allow you to be open to other things in the universe too um so i just wanted to put that out there could have finished in a better way thanks man